Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Henderson. I'd like to welcome uh, everyone today to our webinar. Uh, and I have a, a number of other folks that are joining us today. So if, if with that, uh, and I'm broadcasting from Raleigh, North Carolina. So uh, Ben, uh, please uh, feel free to go forward. Hello, how are you guys doing? Ben Coyle, nice uh, for you guys to join us. Uh, thank you for the repeat uh, attendees. Thank you for your support. Um, hopefully we will be able to uh, meet your expectations today. Uh, Colleen, go for it. Hey everyone, Colleen McLaughlin, I'm the event manager with RAB. I'll be doing Q&A again today, so if anyone has questions throughout the broadcast, please make sure you type it into the question box and we'll get back to you at the end. Hi, I'm Bob Mead. I'm the New England District Manager broadcasting from Unionville, Connecticut. Uh, thank you very much for taking some time out to listen to us talk about some floods today. And I'm Kevin Byrne, a District Sales Manager here in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, specifically just on the other side of the Chesapeake Bay from Annapolis, Maryland. Um, to reiterate what Bob said, appreciate you guys coming out today to learn a little bit more about our floodlight offering. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. So let's get started now. So with, with that, uh, the perfect flood is a RAB flood. So we want to talk about our floodlights and spotlights today. And so with that, we're going to move uh, forward. And as we normally do, we're going to start out with three takeaways. So the first one, we hope you will maybe remember uh, as we start out today, is relying on experienced sales professional will expand your use of RAB products and increase revenue. We all want to increase revenue. and so. But working smarter, not harder, is really a good idea. The second one is increasing your knowledge in the proper use of spots and floods will limit rework and reduce costs. So increasing your knowledge, uh, when you limit rework, you're going to also uh, reduce your costs. And then last is listening to real world application examples will build confidence. When we have confidence, then we're going to increase our sales and we can learn from actually what has happened in the past. So let's start out by a little bit of, uh, of knowledge or baseline that we all need when we talk about floodlights and spotlights. So it's the uh, NEMA, National Electrical Manufacturers Association, luminaire classifications. And you'll see there uh, this table over here and you'll see these beam types, one through seven. And each one of those numbers represents a range of a field angle. So for instance, if you look in, at the table here, uh, a NEMA 3 is 29 degrees to 46 degrees. This is regardless of what manufacturer it is. They fall into a certain range of, of so if, if one manufacturer is 30 and another one is 32, it's still a NEMA 3 classification. You'll also notice uh, if you, you take a look uh, at the distance here, it's over uh, numerically to the right. But the spotlights, of course, send the, the lighting further, uh, and the floodlights are wider, but they don't send the light as far. So taking that knowledge, as, as well as you usually see two numbers. Uh, so like for a floodlight, it's like a seven by six, or a four by six, or whatever that is. So the, the first number is always the horizontal beam spread, and the second number is always the vertical beam spread. So as we use this knowledge, we're going to use this today in our sessions to talk about our products. So as an example to start us out, what type of application would this name of beam spread configuration be? So a seven by six, by the way, that one is over 50% of the floodlights that are sold are seven by six. So it's a very wide angle, a little bit wider uh, horizontally, seven than it is six. So you could do a building facade or you could do a parking lot. Also a flag, so uh, or a narrow accent. Typically, that's either a three by three or a four by four. Uh, typically, for a standard size flag, a two by two is a little bit narrow for the standard size flag, and a five is a little bit too wide and over that, and you're wasting. Uh, and then if you go to a six by four, so let's look at the numbers. A six is a larger number, so it's it's going to be larger horizontally and more narrow vertically. What does that remind you of? That's a sign or a billboard. So this is kind of how we use these numbers to get us started here. So we're gonna be talking about uh, eight different products and four of the products uh, fall into the floods and spots and then four other products uh, fall into landscape. 
Okay, so we're going to talk about the first or top four, uh, first of all, and here we go. So under the floods and spots, uh, we have this uh, guide, and you'll take a look, and we're going to zero in on the floodlights. This is our outdoor guide, and so you'll notice they're broken up into ultra economy, economy, standard, and premium. So you have a budget. The project has a certain characteristic. You know what those are. So the idea is to save time, be efficient, that if you know where you are, then here's where you can kind of look to see what is offered here. We have high wattage as well as low wattage. And so we're gonna cover this uh, in detail today. Let's, let's get into the first one, which is our X34 floodlight. This is in the ultra economy uh, product line. And so if you'll see these numbers to the left, the 16, that's 1600 lumens. 2,500 lumens, 3,500, 5,500, 65, and on up to the to the 19,500 lumens. You just add a zero, two zeros besides that. It comes in 3,000 K and 4, 5,000 K, and so a number of you have asked for the 4,000 K, and that's on the roadmap to be added. Uh, it comes in either 120 or 277, and you have a couple of different. Uh, mountings depending on the size. You'll see that the larger two are different from that knuckle mount, which is the smaller, smaller two. Okay, and also uh, being outdoor, uh, rarely would you need a, a, a 90 plus, so these are 80 plus CRI. And so some of the, the features of this product, by the way, this X34, this is, uh, and we, we're very pleased to, to say this and, and, and very grateful that this is the most uh, successful product launch that RAB has ever had in the history of the company. Uh, and so it, it's it's DLC uh, and it's IP65. Remember, this is, has to do with the dust and also the water. The dust is the first number. So 65, water related, is like a garden hose. It's of course outdoors, so it's wet rated. Now, you see the, see the NEMA? So it's a seven by seven, a very wide angle floodlight comes automatically with zero to 10 uh, as far as dimming, 50,000 hours, and has our limited warranty. Just a, just a great flood if you want a wide angle of flood, and it's a very ultra economy price. Okay, the next family is our PIP, and our PIP XL, XL being the larger version. So two varieties of DLC are rating, depending on the product. Here's our, our rating for uh, the 120-277, uh, and also, that's, so that's universal voltage, or whatever it is, anywhere in between there, it'll work. But we also offer 480. So we're going from ultra to economy versions. This one comes on another wide angle, seven by six. Now notice this one is a IP66. So this is high pressure water. And then 60,000, a little bit longer life, and still has our five year limited warranty. So we've covered ultra and we've covered economy. And we move on into our FF LED. Uh, and FF, some, some of you may not know what that means. It started out in the old days of uh, traditional lighting, a future, future flood. And we just retain that FF LED. And as we move forward with these product lines, you'll notice we're continually adding features and more of this and more of that that we'll cover. So again, DLC, both premium and standard, voltage is the same. Now we're adding something new. So American Bureau of Shipping. So it's approved for those applications. And now look, this one comes with our five year, no compromise warranty. So now let's look at the sizes. So the small one, it really is uh, kind of, uh, it's just a tremendous product. In fact, many, many people have tried to, to copy this one, but uh, our optics on this and our quality has been really unparalleled, still is today. Uh, so that's the small one the 18. And uh, then we get into the next size up. It has four lumen packages, everything from the 26 all the way up through the 80. Then the next one up is the 120. That's the FF LED. And then the last one, the 180 and the 230. So originally those weren't part of the family and they were added. And so they were added uh, so that you, if you need uh, a lot of lumens, but you don't quite want to go to the premium level and you want to keep it standard, then those last two high wattage, 180 and 230, really fit that bill. 
So that's the FF LED family. And then notice we mentioned we add things as we go up and forward. So this one comes in three beam spreads, seven by six, again, the standard one that over 50% of the floods are. Five by five was kind of like an intermediate. It's between a spot and a flood beginning to narrow down. And then the four by four is the upper end of the spotlight. Okay, so now we think of floodlights typically outdoors, but, but think about this. Well, look at this picture. Who would have ever thought that the combination, there are some slims in here, but also this, this uh, FF LED 52, 26, uh, and 18s strategically placed. Look, look at how wonderful that uh, environment looks. So floodlights can go, and also I want you to call your attention. You don't think of floodlights and things looking good. Look at the the, the uh, uh, fuse and, and the rich uh, finish that's popping in this church. So these are another way, another alternate way that you can utilize floodlights. All right, and then we got building facades. The lower ones are the higher, 39, and then the upper range is the uh, 18. Notice when you have uh, areas where you have uh, lighting and then not lighting, that creates drama. Certainly a lot of drama in this photo, in this application. Okay, now we get to our premium level, so the FX LEDs. And you'll see here, very robust, uh, versatile, and just excellent high performance. And so the family that you'll see of our FX starts down at 78, and it goes all the way through up now to 500 watts. And, and so it's, it's they're really a, a, an outstanding product. You see where the, the, the uh, 300 and the 500 won awards. Uh, and, and, you'll, and so it's just an unbelievable, unbelievably good, good product. In fact, I'll tell you a little story here. Uh, so this story is about uh, this 300 and the 500. When we introduced the 300 first and then introduced the 500, we didn't have to change the housing. The heat sink was so robust on the 300, so it just takes care of the heat. And we want a product to last a long time. Again. Uh, seven by six, six by four, four by six, five by five, and three by three. Five different beam spreads depending on what it is that you need. And here's an example of the Renaissance Tider Tower in uh, Dallas. So look, take a look at this. High drama, it looks great whether you're close up or far distance. There's a couple of other small numbers of other uh, fixtures that are included in this. One of them is a shark. But by far, the, most of the lighting is coming from the FX LED 300. Then we have an auditorium here. So you've got indirect lighting, lighting the ceiling, uh, very, makes it very comfortable. A lot of light, indirect light, a white uh, or an off white ceiling does a great job. All right, so now we're gonna move into a little different series, but still using some of the same housings that we've introduced to. This is the Easy LED series. It only comes in three by three and four by four. We're, we're lighting this sign over at the Columbia College of Art and Design. Went from 1100 watts uh, to 78 watts per fixture, 11,000 11, savings over five years. So uh, if you need to have a, a long distance of, of light, that three by three or the four by four, uh, think about the, the energy savings, 1100 watts, all the way down to 78 watts, one for one, okay? And then the canvas, this is this, uh, where you have the six by four beam, so like a sign or a billboard, it's a perfect application. Okay, so now we'd like to invite Bob and Kevin back on uh, to the, to the uh, panel discussion. And I've got a few questions for these guys. And so the first one uh, is uh, for, for Kevin. Uh, so Kevin, uh, this X34, uh, it just stands out as, as just a tremendous product. As I mentioned, it's, it's just been one of the, the most successful products. But how does it continue to exceed the expectations of our customers? Can you can you share a little bit of info about that? Sure, love to. So with me, the X34, it's just, it's all about value, right? I mean, we, we launched that as kind of an ultra economy option in our floodlight family. And, and if you look at this little thing, and I happen to have one right next to me, 
with a form factor that's about the size of a cell phone. You just get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, this is the X34 1600 lumen uh, option. So you're getting about a 50 watt or 70 watt metal halide equivalent. Again, in a very small, slim form factor. And if anybody's actually held one of these in their hands, this is not a cheaply made fixture. This has a really robust uh, die cast aluminum housing. A lot of the competitors in this kind of price point You've got a kind of a plastic housing, probably a plastic lens. This is a glass lens. Um, like Bob talked about, when we first launched this family, it was just three smaller form factors up to 6,500 lumens available. We doubled down on the X34 family at the end of last year, and now we've got up to 20,000 lumens. Uh, so like a 400 watt metal halide equivalent. Sold a very aggressive price point. Got slip fitter and trendy mount options now. So it's a very versatile family. And we've kind of listened to the uh, the market as well. We've always been asked, when's it coming out in white? Uh, well, that's that's coming soon. You're going to see a white finish X34 very, very soon. Um, and that's going to be great because a lot of the applications, especially for the smaller form factors, you're talking about hanging those under eaves or soffits and people want the white finish. Smaller ones also great for little sign lighters. So um, just kind of adding on to that very versatile product family. Okay. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's definitely one of my favorites. So, Bob, let's jump over to the FFLED family just a second. So, as you work with your customers, uh, and you know, over the, they've got a wide range, as we just saw, of these larger floodlights. Uh, but uh, what is it that, you know, over 50% of the time, people come back to this FFLED? And it's been around a while, uh, but it's just been a real uh, good performer. Could you tell us a little bit more from your point of view? Absolutely. I mean, it is one of the, the first floods we launched several years ago. Um, but the great thing about the FF family is besides a 100,000 hour life and the five year no compromise warranty, is the fact that you can get so many lumen packages and beam spreads in a similar or same form factor. So if you think about any of the projects you're going, you're walking, and you've got many different styles of floodlight, shapes of floodlight, mounting styles of floodlight, with the FF line, you can really use the same physical shape and in some cases sizes across several different parts of the same job. So for example, an FFLED18 coupled with our Stealth 360 and our STLF kit, uh, you know, you get a motion sensor light and our FFLED18. You move up another size from there, you get four different lumen packages in the same physical housing with three different beam spreads and three different mounting styles, either a half inch knuckle, a trunnion, or a slip fitter. So, you know, depending on what the situation is and what it calls for and what might be existing there, you've got many different styles of fixture that you can use to accurately and properly, you know, light your job, you know, all the way up to that large 230 watt for giant, you know, flood lighting applications. You can really use some variation of the FFLED 18 for accent lighting, spot lighting, uh, to general site lighting. Um, so while they have different physical sizes, uh, you know, it's all essentially the same shape and style. So it creates a great uniformity of fixture style across many different applications on the same project. Very good. Uh, so Kevin, let's go over and ask you uh, about the tip. So some uh, of, our, of our customers wonder, since we introduced the X34, uh, so why why in the world, uh, what's the difference like in the F-34 and, and the PIP? What are we getting when we when we go from ultra economy to the PIP, which is economy? Uh, what's a good application? Could you talk about that a little bit? That's a good question. I think the dog wants to know about the PIP too, whoever's dog that is. But um, so a lot of people did kind of wonder where does the PIP fit now? It kind of found itself in a kind of an interesting place in our product family because we introduced the X-34 and it really kind of took off. But there are still some applications where the PIP really fits the bill. And uh, that's that's primarily where you're on a budget, the project is very budget driven, but you need some of the bells and whistles and features of our premium floods, the FF LEDs and the FX LEDs. Specifically, it's a 480 volt application or you need a photo cell. Um, just specifically just had an, a uh, project down here outside of Washington DC, it was a small parking deck. And up on the top deck, there were existing 15 or 20 foot poles and very, budget driven and user did not want to relocate poles, didn't want to talk about area lights with, you know, specific distributions, just wanted a one for one replacement of the 400 watt metal halide fixtures that were up on the bullhorns. Needed photo cell, it was a 480 volt application. We were able to, we were able to uh, suggest the PIP, good one for one replacement, 
480 volt was an option. Photocell was an option, just an easy one for one replacement of those old 400 watt metal halides. Very happy, both from a uh, the light distribution standpoint, the lot was well lit and met his budget. Good deal. So all the options that we have, uh, depending on the features that required like that project you mentioned with the 480, that, that's where the PIP just fell right in. So uh, Bob, the last one that I have here is talking about our premium our FX LED. Uh, so uh, this this one is uh, many times a customer will just you know use the FX and, and they like it so well, especially in our high wattages, they just stay with it, just ride ride that horse. And so uh, can you share up maybe one of your projects where something like this might have happened? Absolutely. Um, you know, several years ago, we launched our FX LED 150, which is our 400 watt HID equivalent. And, you know, in a lot of cases, depending on the application, you know, I was getting asked to go out to certain jobs where they, you know, especially car dealerships where they had thousand watt floodlights and they wanted to see if, you know, our 400 watt equivalent LED could, you know, accurately light the spaces using, you know, the 150 watt FX. In a lot of cases, it could. Um, you know, in some cases, especially car dealerships, they were mounting thousand watt floods at, you know, lower mounting heights where you probably really didn't need a thousand watts of metal halide. So when we eventually launched our FX LED 300, our true thousand watt equivalent, uh, I started getting a flood of calls, no pun intended. Um, I had done a lot of work with the state of Connecticut over the years, which is where I'm based. And, uh, you know, I was called out to several large general flood lighting uh, opportunities to replace thousand watt floods where they really needed a true thousand watt equivalent. And if you think about where a thousand watt flood typically is, is mounted, you know, very high up, you know, either on a tall building or a tall pole, not the easiest location to get to to replace a lamp or a ballast. Um, so obviously using a hundred thousand hour life fixture with, you know, the no compromise wrap warranty, you know, these are a great opportunity to get up there and, you know, not have to have guys consistently going up and replacing ballasts and lamps. Um, so we were able to capture a lot of business on these general, you know, floodlighting applications. And through some of this work with the state, I was called to go to the state capitol in Hartford where they have, uh, they had 24,000 watt spotlights lighting up their dome in downtown Hartford. And because of the location of those floods, they were looking for something that, a solution where they wouldn't have to be sending their guys up to replace these lamps and ballasts in a pretty, pretty tricky location to be doing this. Um, we were allowed to do uh, one of our free lighting designs where we showed a rendering of what their dome would look like uh, with our thousand watt uh, replacement LED. And because we can do five different distribution patterns in our FX LED 300, we were able to replace those 24,000 watt uh, floodlights with our 300 watt uh, FX LED 300 with a three by three distribution. Um, and I'm now proud to say that it is the best well lit uh, state capital in all 50 states. I guarantee it. Spoken like that someone truly from Connecticut. Great, great job. <laughs> All right, so it's time to turn this over to Ben, and uh, he's going to talk about our floods and our spots regarding landscape. All right, friends. Uh, my uh, set of products are going to be slightly different than Bob's, but they're actually in the same exact document that he had. So in this product comparison chart that we uh, frequently reference, what we're talking about are the products that are down at the bottom of the first page where we're talking from an outdoor standpoint. Uh, the four that I'm actually gonna talk about is the Leslie, the Bullet, the HB LED, which actually has a, a family of products there. It's the HB for a flood, HS for a spot, spot, and HN for a narrow spot. I'm also gonna throw in the LF LED just for fun. Uh, we have a, a equivalency chart that we just recently came out with. Uh, this is the outdoor equivalency chart. It's four pages long. It's set up just like the equivalency charts that you guys have loved in the past. Um, but with this, we're actually incorporating that ultra economy, economy, standard, and premium into the equivalency chart. Uh, the one that we just came out with uh, about a week ago was actually our indoor chart. So um, ask your, or actually you can go to drive.radweb.com and download these. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna get right into uh, the four different families. Here's what they look like. 
with Bob, he has a couple, he had a couple of different sizes to look at. The X34 had multiple sizes, the FF had multiple sizes. When we're talking here about the Leslie, the Bullet, the LF, and the H series, they all have the same exact size. Uh, so the Leslie on the left, it's about four and a half inches in diameter. Same with the Bullet, about four and a half inches in diameter. The LF LED is actually two and a half. So it's actually got a very nice a slim profile, at least from the lens standpoint. And the HB, HS, and HN on the right is about five and a half inches wide. So with these, uh, the, the, there's just one housing size available in four colors, green, white, black, and bronze. And they all have the knuckle mount. So you're not gonna get a slip fitter and you're not gonna get a trunnion mountain in any of these families. When we look at the uh, water protection, uh, it depends upon which test was actually performed. Uh, the Leslie is an IP66, the Bullet is a UL wet rated along with the LF and the H series. Uh, from a utility incentive standpoint, the two that uh, could potentially receive incentives are the Leslie, from, which has an Energy Star designation, and the HS, HB, and HN could potentially either have the DLC listed or the DLC premium category on that guy. So when we look at a correlated color temperature across the board, you're basically doing the same uh, three colors, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000 K. It just so happens that the LF LED doesn't quite have 5,000 K. If you look there uh, very closely, uh, the LF is uh, 4,800 K. So when we look at from a vo voltage standpoint and also from a dimming standpoint, uh, the Leslie is dedicated 120 volts, 120 volts only, nothing else. That's all you get with the Leslie. When we go to the Bullet, the Bullet is also 120 volts, but that product right there can actually be triac and EOV dimmed. When we get up to the next one, the LF, which I'm actually gonna throw a little tidbit in there for when I first saw this, because it's nice two and a half inches in diameter, great compact source, I always thought that the LF stood for little flood. I was corrected. It actually stands for landscape fund, flood. So it's a landscape little flood in my world. Now, when we look here at the LF LED, we actually have uh, two different voltages. We have a low voltage version, and then we have this other uh, version, the 120 through 240 volt. And the last one that we have, when we get into that H series, we do have a low voltage version of that, universal voltage, 480 volt, and some of those have a zero to 10 volt dimming capability. So as we go from the Leslie over to the H series, uh, we're actually getting more and more features and we're gonna see that uh, trend when we talk about some of our other, or sorry, some of the other characteristics as we go through. When we look at a life stand for the these different products from a lifespan standpoint, the Leslie is a 60,000 hour product, the Bullet, the LF, and the H series are all a 100,000 hour product. And when we look at these guys, uh, when we look at the, the Leslie, so we look at the Leslie right here, there is uh, not really much heat sinking to this guy. Uh, actually, let me get the right thing highlighter. And then when we get to the Bullet right here, um, there was actually a little bit of heat sinking on the Bullet, uh, on the back side of the Bullet, so there's a couple of fins. When we get to the LF LED, there's a little bit of ribs on it. When we get over to the H series, the one over on the right, it's actually built very similar to our LF, sorry, our FF LED and our uh, FX LED, where there's actually heat fins that separate the driver that's on the back side and the LED module that's on the front side, and you actually have airflow through. Uh, so very well built products. Now, when we talk about a, from a warranty standpoint, the Leslie falls into our economy family. So it has that five year limited warranty, which doesn't include labor. And the other three families actually have that red uh, five year full warranty. Uh, when we talk about NEMA beam spreads, when the Leslie um, is a very economy based type product. It only has a six by six that we can see there in the bottom left. Uh, the Bullet also has a six by six. But when we get to the LF, we're now kind of differentiating the difference between those lower landscape floods and these higher end landscape floods. With the LF, uh, it comes uh, out of the box with a four by four and 
come in inside the box, it actually has a little collet where you can unscrew the four by four optics and screw on the three by three optics. So every LF LED that you get, have the you have the ability to either have that four by four, which is more of kind of like a, a wide spot, uh, than a three by three, which is like your traditional, what you would think of a traditional spot to be. Uh, then over on the H series, we have the HN, which is the three by three, the HS, uh, the, the spot with the four by four and the HB with that five by five. So five by five is your flood, four by four is kind of like that middle ground that Bob was talking about. And then your three by three, which is really just pushing the light forward. So we're seeing a little bit of a differentiation between these different flood families. Now this one probably has the most uh, differentiation right here. When we had Bob, Bob talked about products that typically sit in this range right here. So when we talk about the X34 at 1900 and or 19,500 lumens and the 500 watt being, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 lumens out of those guys, uh, the, the products that I'm talking about here are not the ones that have these huge, huge light outputs. The ones that I'm talking about here are typically on the low end of what Bob was talking about, which are lower light outputs, 1,000 lumens. When we even get into these LF LEDs, we see here that these LF LEDs, depending upon whether it's the low voltage version or the line voltage version, um, have really low light outputs, with the H series having a 13 watt version, a 14, and then a 26 watt. So you, again, when you get into those nicer, the higher end landscape products, you get more options available to you, opposed to what you get when you use the Leslie on the left. Uh, to show some examples of how different products have been used, uh, the Bullet, so here's the, the Bullet 12, was actually lighting a, actually is still lighting a traveling Vietnam Memorial wall. So there were 44 of these on this uh, 300 foot replica of the uh, Vietnam Memorial wall as it travels around the country. Another one that we have here, uh, this actually is a rendering from one of our lighting designers. Uh, they were actually asked in this design to take the uh, LF LED 5, the 5 watt LED, and actually place them along this beam right here and place it along this beam right here. And it's illuminating the underneath the underside of that canopy. Uh, there are actually two canopies of this. There was one that we see here and back behind, there's another one that's a little bit higher up that's being blocked. But with Bob talking about the use of floods inside of a space, we've actually had customers use um, floodlights in non-traditional applications. And with the fact that you have four different colors to choose from, especially that white and that black, uh, you're able to take the, these products and put them in places that would not traditionally be used with the flood. What's great about this guy, going back to that two and a half inch diameter of of the light coming out, you have this nice three by three pattern in this really, really small aperture. Now you can use this as a tool to create a beautiful design, not only to light up a tree or light up a bush or light up some architectural feature or a piece of art, you can actually now start placing it in different locations on a building next to a building to create some very fun looks. Uh, the last one that I have for you actually comes from uh, really close to where I grew up. I grew up in Southern California. Uh, this is the Gold Line Bridge, uh, Interstate 210 or the 210, uh, as uh, those of you who know who come from Southern California. We can see over on the left, the HS uh, 13 watt uh, put up right next to the uh, bridge, grazing the uh, brick right there, creating a nice effect uh, shining the lights up. So building on what Bob had, which were these lots of options, these bigger guys, um, I was able to bring to the table these smaller solutions uh, that could potentially be used in similar applications to Bob's, but uh, just remember that these guys don't quite have the same punch that the others uh, have. So with that, I'm actually gonna ask my friends to come back on. Bob Mead and Kevin Byrne. And we're gonna talk a little bit about a couple of different examples, some uh, different things that they've, uh, experiences that they've had when they've used different products. So Kevin, this first one's for you. The Leslie um, has uh, some features 
maybe similar to, but maybe a little bit different than the X34. You already talked about the X34. What about the Leslie? What feature about the Leslie makes it different than the other RAB products and different from our competition? So first, I'm going to go on a quick little sidebar about the Leslie, just a little piece of RAB uh, trivia. Uh, the Leslie was actually named after a longtime RAB employee. And as the legend is told, he, he got a job because he stopped to help Mr. Barna, our president and owner, change a flat tire in New York City. Uh, he enjoyed a 40 plus year career with RAB and I think just recently retired. But anyway, just a little, little nugget, little trivia nugget for you. That's going to be on the quiz. So remember that. Um, in terms of the Leslie itself as a fixture, uh, it's just a very efficient fixture. One of the primary applications I see it used in, Ben, is, is to replace dual head sensor lights, um, your old traditional 75 watt PARs. And we're replacing that with a dual head 13 watt fixture. So you're, you're getting about 80% energy savings uh, with this fixture. It's coupled with our SMS sensor, um, got a nice wide beam spread. So again, very efficient, diffusing lenses. So it kind of eliminates hot spots um, and glare. We lost Bob there. Um, but uh, now it's just a very, very efficient and economical fixture. It's gonna be a step up from those sensor lights you would find at the big box store, but still very competitively priced. Plus it has that green option, right? It has that green color yep. that yep. Uh, Mr. Henderson talked about all these wonderful products. Not a single one of those have uh, the green color. So the Leslie really stands out with having uh, a couple of features that none of the other product families have. Okay, so Mr. Mead, I don't want uh, Henderson to hop on here if I just say Bob, uh, but Bob, give me an example of a project that went through multiple iterations um, and explain why the bullet was selected as the better solution. Sure. Uh, I've been working with a property management company uh, in my territory on a, a large set of condos. And uh, once we had replaced all their interior lighting, uh, it was time to move to their on-building exterior fixtures. And this has been a, a bit of a point of contention uh, with them in the past because they were taking their regular uh, par holder floods and uh, they had a sensor on them from a big box store and they're replacing it with their LED floods. And there's some compatibility issues between the, the screw and LEDs and the El Cheapo uh, motion sensor that they had bought. So then they went back to the big box store and they ended up buying a full uh, LED fixture and sensor combo kit. Uh, well, more issues persisted. Um, we went into their little stock room they had at the condo and they had a, a shelf full of these units. Uh, and the reason was, you know, they were continually having to replace these. So instead of running to the store, they could just run into their little stock room and go and replace their kit. So I, uh, I provided a sample of our SMS Bullet 2x12 kit, which is two of our 12 watt, uh, S uh, two of our 12 watt uh, Bullet 12s, and our uh, SMS 500, which we sell as a kit, uh, and put it up, and they absolutely loved it. The performance of both the heads with our sensor uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, not only did Rab Lighting invent motion activated lighting back in the 80s, but we also have the best warranty in the industry with a 10 year, no compromise and 100,000 hour life on these. Uh, needless to say, they no longer have to waste their shelf space with El Cheapo Home Depot items for their motion activated floodlights. But the other great thing with our bullet line is we do sell it in a double headed sensor kit, um, but we also sell them as standalone options as well. So we replaced all of their landscape lighting with the Verde green, uh, the green version of our bullet 12s as well. So not only were we replacing all of their uh, sensor kits with our bullet 12 kit, but also all of their landscape lighting uh, are also versions of the bullet too. Excellent. Okay, Kevin, uh, we sell some HBs, we sell some HSs, and we sell some HNs. Where is the HS used? And why does that application make the HS like the perfect solution for that specific application? And so, so usually when, when I'm getting calls for flag lighting applications, the HS and even the HN to an extent are kind of my go-to um, fixtures for those applications. And the reason for that is a lot of people, when they call, they think, all right, I've got a 30 or 40 foot flagpole and I've got to light this big flag up there. I'm going to need a fixture with a whole lot of lumen output. It's going to consume a whole lot of wattage. And that's not really the case when you talk about the beam angles like Bob Henderson was talking about earlier, and you've got a beam spread of three by three or four by four, 
it's just much more efficient to get the light where you need to get it. So you can get like 30 or 40 feet away with a 13 watt or 18 watt or 26 watt HS or HN LED. Uh, very small form factor on those fixtures as well. Again, a lot of good finish options, white, the Verde green, black, bronze, because they're gonna be used typically in landscape kind of applications. So people are gonna want options. And then the big thing with, with those HS and HN LED families is they come 100,000 hour life and that five year no compromise warranty. Um, but yeah, when I'm, when, when I'm talking to people about lighting up a flag, those are usually the go-to options. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so uh, Mr. Mead, uh, do you have an example of where a customer used the LF LED, liked it so much, uh, they decided to use it in some other locations because it worked so well? Can you explain? I do. Uh, there's an architect that I work with out of Connecticut here um, who uh, used the brass version of our LF LED actually on his own house, which is down on the Connecticut shoreline, because uh, it stands up pretty well to the salt air and adds a nice little patina to it. And uh, he was designing a, uh, a banquet facility used for weddings and other events and wanted to use our LF LED line. Um, and you know, because of the, the location that the facility is being built in, about 60% or so uh, of the installation could be trenched with, you know, pipe and, uh, you know, we could use a line voltage uh, LF LEDs. And then about the other 40%, because of the bedrock and other obstacles, we weren't able to use uh, our line voltage versions. But fortunately, uh, without suffering too much on the lumen output, uh, we were able to use our low voltage line. So it's a continu uh, continuation of the, the design of the fixture, same form factor, same central fixtures, uh, just two different voltages. Uh, so we're able to get around some of those issues with the installation while using two different voltages, but using the exact same housing, exact same fixture. Excellent. All right, thank you guys uh, for your experience. Uh, it's always nice to have uh, some sales professionals uh, join us uh, and give us their perspective on how to use these different floods. So as we uh, close uh, this session on uh, RAB spots and floods, we have the same three takeaways that uh, Bob Henderson mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, we want you uh, relying on an experienced sales professional will expand your use of RAB products and increase revenue. The second takeaway that we have for you guys is increasing your knowledge in the proper use of spots and floods will limit, limit rework and reduce cost. And the last one here is listening to real world or listening to real world application examples will build confidence. Hopefully we've given you an idea of typical uses of where products live. Also uh, some places where you could potentially use a floodlight uh, and from a non-traditional standpoint. Uh, just like what we do uh, every week, we have five individuals that are spread across the country to meet your guys' needs. Scott Teague in the West, Matt Teets in the Midwest, Frank from Maine to Kentucky, Adam uh, along the coast and uh, with some of our higher uh, population metro areas, and Terry Crawley along the south, south to Texas. Uh, they can uh, work with you and help you uh, use RAB floods and spots to your heart's content. So with that, uh, I think Mr. Henderson will probably pop his head on um, and say hello, uh, or actually say goodbye. Um, thank you guys for coming. Uh, we do have some